The electronic speed switch allows you to adjust your rotary tool's speed. The circuit board has the adjustment wheel and the circuitry that controls the motor speed. If you can no longer adjust the rotary tool's speed, you will need to replace the speed switch. The speed switch can also be the reason your rotary tool won't turn on. But before you replace it, you will want to test the cord, switch, and brushes. Replacing the electronic speed switch is a repair that you can do yourself, and I'm going to show you how. I'll begin by removing the bit and the collet from the rotary tool. Next, I'll remove the collar. It just unthreads. Now I'll remove the motor brushes. Now I'll remove the hanger from the rear of the tool. Now I can split the two halves of the motor housing by removing the screws. Now I'll remove the spindle lock from the housing, and now I'm going to lift all of the other pieces up and out of the second motor housing. I'll remove the speed control cover from the circuit board, and now I can begin disassembling the wires. You'll want to take note of the location of each wire before removing them. I'll start with the two cord wires going to the circuit board. They're held in place with a couple of screws. Next, I have the black and red wires going to the field and I'll remove those. They're held in place with a couple of press-in connectors. Now I can begin installing the new circuit board. I find it's helpful to pre-route the wires so they're similar to how they were on the old one. So the red wire should go behind this box, and then I'll cross the black wire over the blue. This will make reassembly a little bit easier. Now I'll reassemble the field wires. Black wire on the bottom, and the red wire on top. And now the cord wires, starting with the black, and then the white. Now I can reassemble everything back into the housing. The first thing I'll take care of is this blue wire. The clip needs to slide over this plastic post. You'll notice there's a little notch for it. And as I do this, I'll push the wire down into the opening between the screw post 
and the mount for the rear bearing. Now I'll realign the filled and the armature with the housing. At the same time, I'll place the brush holders back down into their mounts on the housing. Just a matter of taking your time and realigning everything back down into that housing. Go ahead and tuck the armature wire out of the way. In fact, this should be underneath this brush holder, so I'm going to lift that back out. Tuck the red wire under it. And replace that holder. Now I'll continue to tuck the red wire down into the housing. And slide the circuit board into place fits between a couple of grooves in the housing. Get the cord relief lined up with the housing as well. You just want to make sure you have everything out of the way so nothing is going to get pinched when we put the two halves of the tool back together. Looks good. Now I can reinstall the switch actuator. It routes across the top of the housing. And last, we need to take care of the speed control wheel. And its circuit board just presses back onto this housing in these tabs. And I'll go ahead and slide this down and onto the housing. Now I can replace the spindle lock. The top of it is triangular. You'll notice there's a picture of a lock on it. The top of the lock should point to the front of the tool. I'll place the spring over the shaft on the lock, and now this assembly goes into the housing. Now I'm ready to put the two halves of the housing back together. Again, I'll just take my time and make sure everything is aligned as I do this. You don't want to force it, it should go together pretty easily. Once everything's realigned, I'll secure it with the screws. Now I'll reinstall the motor brushes. the hanger the collar and finally the collet and bit. And that's all it takes to install a new electronic speed control on your rotary tool.